16. Mark chapter 16. serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Lord, speak that we, your people, hear and receive and do. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Jesus, when he was with his disciples, had told them that he would be arrested by the scribes and the Pharisees and the religious rulers, that he would be mocked and mistreated and beat and whooped. But he said, on the third day, I'm going to get up. Amen. Amen. As I told you all the week, only someone who really has power can tell you what somebody is going to do. And then after they do it, they still get up. Amen. Amen. Jesus, because he knew who he was and is, told some folks that if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up in 
they misunderstanding him thought that he was talking about the physical literal temple in Jerusalem. They did not understand that he was talking about the temple of his body. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians 3.16, know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says if anyone destroy this temple, then God will deal with them. It's a dangerous thing to mess with God's property, which is God's people. So you really don't have to worry about folks. You just need to understand that you are his temple. And the Holy Spirit is in you. And if you understand that, then uh, when people come at you, you simply just lay and like, you don't know what you're touching. You're stepping on holy ground. And you're dealing with a greater power. And don't let the outside appearance fool you. But it ain't really what's on the outside. It's who lives on the, on the inside. Amen, amen. And uh, Jesus said, don't nobody take my life. I lay it down and it. And I lay it down and I can pick it back up. The Bible says in him was life and that life was the light of men. How can you kill the one who is life and created life? Who upholds everything by the word of his power? Amen. But you know some folk, they just got to try because they don't understand it. Amen, amen. And one thing about our God, he is not a liar. If he said, if you destroy this temple, I'm going to raise it up in three days, then his word is gone. You can believe that he's going to get up. Amen, amen. Jesus went through scourging and whipping and slapping and plucking out of his beard. They whipped him so bad that you could see his bones. The same folks who cheered for him as he was coming into Jerusalem. Now some of those same folks were saying crucify him. Amen. Don't, don't get caught up in the shots. Amen. The same folks can turn on you. Amen. It, it depending on what situation you in. See, there are people who are situational and they, they, they appraise us by convenience. But not true praise. Amen. A true praise or praise at home. Amen. Amen. They don't need to keep all the other choir. They, they praise at home. Amen. Amen. They get melodies from heaven by the Spirit. And they, they can, any of the praises that know how to praise at home. Amen. 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 And they came to arrest Jesus, uh, one of them who he had chosen. And he told them, I, I chose 12 of you, one of you was a devil. Amen. He said, now don't get it twisted. I know who you are. Amen. Amen. Now you really got to be a devil and know you're a devil when he ain't rolling on the long time. But I just want to let y'all know that everybody rolling with you ain't holy. Amen. Amen. You could by chance pick the devil. And sometimes you pick the devil, you don't know you're picking the devil, but God have you choose the devil so that you can get in certain places that he has already ordained. And you and your flesh are not do that. How do you them? Uh, you chose them, but God used them to get you where he wanted you to be. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Then, uh, Jesus. Jesus so cool, he even told the devil that he chose to be Satan, enter his heart, into Judas. He said, look here, whatever you, what you gonna do, do it quick. Jesus ain't gonna be slow, cause look, I need you to hurry up, cause we about to get close to the Passover, and I need you to go ahead and do your duty. Are, are y'all with me? Amen. There are some folks who are in ministry, they're really chosen to betray you into purpose. Y'all want to hear everybody. Okay, so they made them all. Right. And this is the same Christian. I made them all. Right. Amen. Amen. They heard me. And then look at this. All he wanted were 30 pieces of silver to sell out our Lord. Ain't enough precious metal in the earth and throughout the universe that we could receive 
to sell out our city. Oh, they don't have enough money in there to build big sorrows and anybody else who got billions and trillions. They don't have enough to give us to betray our Savior. Y'all ain't with me. Amen. The love of money is the root of what? Oh, evil. I like money. It has its purposes. But I don't love it. Amen. Amen. It serves a purpose. Then he had a nerve to to greet our Savior with a kiss. Now the Bible tells us to greet one another with a holy kiss. You notice that the Bible didn't put holy in front of that kiss. But it's just greeting him with a, with a kiss. Anytime the devil kiss you, ain't not holy in that kiss. Anybody ever had some unholy lips to kiss man? Oh, that might be resurrection. Keep moving, Pastor. Don't stop that. But anyway, he turned them over to the authorities and they whooped him and they beat him and the Bible says that he never said a mumbling word but, but he held his peace. Amen. They asked him, are you a king? And he told Pilate, thou sayest. Amen. Amen. He said, don't you know I have power to do? He said, well, you don't have no power over me unless he can do it to you. Look at that little seat you said no. The only reason you're sitting on that seat is because I am the one who allowed you to sit on that seat in the home of love me. Uh, you're just there to serve my purposes and you don't even know. Oh, y'all ain't with me? Oh, uh, And then he, he examined, he said, look at y'all, I'm going to find no fault in them. They said, crucify him. It's like, who you want? Barabbas? Or Jesus? We know folks, folk choose according to their own nature. Uh -huh. You know, there's something about attraction. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. But anyway, the same folks who say, Hosanna, blessed seed that came in the name of the Lord, now saying, crucify. Mm hmm. And they whooped him 39 stripes, which were, was for 39 classes of diseases. And by his stripes, we are healed. After they had whooped him to a point that he was unrecognizable and you could see his bones. Amen. They got a man of North Africa. Uh huh. To tote, help him tote the cross. Amen. It's amazing that all the folks he told them, if you're going to fall out of me, you got to take up your cross and follow me. But when it came time to tote the cross, everybody ran. Uh huh. They nailed him. And he went to work with that. There was a man on his right hand. They were all of them. Finally, he came to the conclusion that, look, this man ain't got nothing to miss. We deserve what we get. And he said, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. So he said, this day we shall be with me in what? Oh, man, Jesus was suffering but still saving. Y'all want to talk to him. Amen. Can you go through something and still do the work of the Lord while you go through it? Amen. Why you're being persecuted? Why you're being talked about? Why there is backbiting? Why there is it? But can you still do the work while you're suffering? Amen. 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 He said to the Father, into thy hands, I commend my, my spirit. The Bible says that he gave up the cross. Amen. The Bible said that the earth started shaking. Amen. Amen. The earth started rattling. Amen. Because it was crying over its creator. Amen. And then the soon the moon wouldn't shine and the sun went dark. Amen. There was a centurion that said, sure. This was the son of God. Ain't it something when God would make a Gentile testify to his identity? When the very folk that he came to save first, y'all want to talk to him? They buried him in a bar tomb because we weren't going to be there long no way. Look, I didn't even bar for three days. You can get back because I'm going to get you out of here. 
I'll be here for three days. That's all I need. Yeah, amen. Just three days, and then when your time comes, you can have it back till I come. Amen. Uh, there was different. There were some folks who believed what Jesus said about getting up on the third day. Because, uh, they said, you know, you know this was saying in three days, and for sure that you know, he's going to get back up. So they stationed soldiers before the tomb. Then they put the stamp on the tomb to let anybody know before you can open this, you have to get through these soldiers and your life will be in danger. Uh huh. But what they didn't know is that uh, who was going to open it went down there and was going to come from up there. Amen. The Bible says uh, the disciples were shut up and locked up in their home because they were scared. Amen. Amen. It's amazing how all the folks are when they know the Lord with them. But when, when the Lord is with them, now they're scared. The same ones that helped them cast out demons, now they're scared. Uh huh. Oh, Peter, the very one who took out his little wrist and sword and cut off Matthew's ear. Now he, he locked up Neve's treasure. Amen. The very one said, I go to prison for you. No, they don't say, I don't need no one. Then they don't say, Didn't I say I don't know? Don't you know what you ask? That one, scared. Uh -huh. They locked up in fear. One day passed by. Soldiers still on the post. The silence still scared. Two days passed by. Soldiers still on the post. The silence scared. Amen. Amen. Third day is about to get interesting now. Oh, yeah. It's about to get interesting because, amen, we're going to see who really listened to Jesus. Amen. Because you can hang around him, but not listen to what he said. Uh -huh. And when you don't listen to what he say, you start operating in fear and not in faith. Uh -huh. And so they walk with him, but when he talked about them, him dying and being crucified, now they, they were scared because they didn't receive what he said and and guard the word in their heart that they might not sin against it. Uh -huh. The Bible says that. There. Oh, the preacher said, Run! In the morning. And I got everybody with me to know about early. In the morning, when those sun starts shaking and rising, and it many, it, it's raised to, to warm the atmosphere. See, I can't wait to get up. To announce the coming of the Son of Righteousness. Y'all think we are healing in his way. Uh -huh. I, I, he, he's commanded that I get up. Man, I gotta get up to see him get up. Y'all gonna talk to him. God said that in the Sabbath was past. Saturday had started to creep into Sunday morning. Uh -huh. The first day of the week, Sunday, Mary Magdalene, uh, one of Jesus' faithful disciples. And, you know, when I found out that uh, when it comes to spiritual matters, women tend to be faithful. Prayer, women. Serve the Lord. Y'all won't talk to me. Y'all won't go with me. Y'all won't let me out here by myself. That's okay. I can, I can say it all by myself if I need to. Jesus in the boat with me. Amen. 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 Mary Magdalene. Mary meaning rebellious. Magdalene meaning a tower. Uh -huh. The Bible says in this woman and the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come in a mm -hmm. They were faithful, but they did not understand. You can be faithful, but don't understand. I'm going to say it again. You can be faithful, but still be in misunderstanding. So you come in with spices, and he said, the Bible said that he will not allow his holy one to see corruption. 
his body would not have a chance to get into decomposition because he would get up before all the atoms in his body stop moving. Y'all ain't with me. They bring the spices. Didn't know y'all just walking steadily. <laughs> but how can an everlasting rose or an everlasting living uh, ever lose its friends? Oh, yeah, I'm to you. They went to anoint him. They don't look here. I'm getting up so that I can anoint y'all. Y'all trying to know me with spices, but I'm about to anoint you with the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. And the very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sofa in the rising of the sun. The Bible says that those that seek me early will find me. Amen. The Bible says that as the deer panteth for the water, who so panteth my soul after thee, O oh Lord. I'd rather have somebody who is faithful but doesn't understand. But at least, you know what? You can be in misunderstanding and be faithful and yet find yourself positioned in the right place to see the miraculous. Faithfulness will get you somewhere even in misunderstanding. The Bible says here that when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away for it was very, very great. Because they had asked and said among themselves, who should roll away the stone? From the door of the soul. Who gonna roll this away? Uh -huh. There are things that only God can do. There are things that man has stationed their people under their authority to lock out what God wants to see a witness to. Uh -huh. They ask him, who gonna do it? Well, he already told me how I'm going to roll. He said, now I'm going to get up. Now, Jesus didn't leave the stone rolled away so he could get out. It's simply so that they could get in and take a peek. Amen. He didn't need that because at this point, he could walk through walls. Uh -huh. And uh, when they looked, they found out that what they were wanting done had already been done. Y'all, y'all ain't shouting at me. You questioning how God gonna do it when it's already done. I'm gonna say it again, and you get happy about the situation. You trying to figure out how you gonna get to Jesus. And Jesus said, it's already rolled away so you can witness that I'm getting ready to do it for you. I'm trying to notice that the stone was very great. But with no problem moving it because the Lord had sent an angel. Uh -huh. And entering into the sofa, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed with long white garments, and they were afraid. Angel here appearing as a young man who's dressed, and he was just there as a witness. He's sitting right where the clothes were. Uh huh. Our Savior ain't wearing no gray clothes. Uh, he's wearing a glorified body. Amen. Amen. So, uh, y'all look at the clothes and let you know he was here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But 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 he don't. He is risen. Uh -huh. Just like he said he would do. Uh -huh. Notice that they were affrighted. No doubt that without the angel being there, the tomb would have been totally dark. Uh, God will illuminate what is darkness with his light so that you can witness that what he said is true. You can't see in no tomb unless it's bright. But anything that comes from the throne of God has its Shekinah glory on it. Uh, this angel didn't need Georgia Power, Real EMC, or Jackson EMC, where I pay my, my light bill, but, but the Lord is light. And if you hang around him, you can't be dark. Y'all want to talk to me? It's dark because you're hanging around dark folk. But if you light, you can light up dark places. Like, man, any smokers in the house need light? I ain't talking about the lights of cigarettes. 
I didn't talk about that like that 93 premium thing. I don't know if y'all know that 93 premium. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about lighting your spirit and your soul so that darkness is eradicated out of your life. Uh, they go to look here and they, they were scared because it was so bright. They expected darkness and ran into some light. Uh -huh. That angel is simply a minister to the heir of the salvation because you, you need somebody to witness to you about Jesus. The Bible says, and he said unto them, Be not afraid. Mm -hmm. The one you're looking for, he's gone. He's gone. That is Mary Magdalene who cast out seven days. Seven. Oh, wow. Oh, Any of y'all know about it? Been demon or how many? Seven. Seven is perfect. She had so many. She was completely filled with demons. Uh huh. This Mary Magdalene, her name, the city which she came from, Magdalene meant a tower. See, a tower was set up so as a watch place for the enemy so that you could see the enemy as the enemy came. How is it that Mary was, was possessed with seven devils and no one sounded alarm that the enemy was coming? Somebody was supposed to be in the tower watching and sounded the alarm, but now Mary was taken over by seven devils because someone was not on the side. Around it happens in the spiritual realm. The Romans could not come if there were not a spiritual problem in Israel. Uh, the physical occupation of Israel was because there was a spiritual occupation of Satan in the land. Y'all ain't with me? Our borders are wide open not because the wall ain't built. The walls are, are already broken down in the spirit realm. Anybody can come through our boat. Chinese, Iraqis, Iran, all our enemies have free access. Why? Is there anybody on the wall sounding the alarm spiritually? Y'all don't know the truth. We already been taken over. Most of our national parks ain't going by us. Y'all don't want to be quiet right now. Y'all don't want the truth. Already taken over. The dollar about when to speak. Y'all want to talk to me. See, the Bible said that man is the head of the woman. Who was supposed to cover mirrors so that the demons would not kill her? That the devils would not take over? Somebody went on task. Amen, amen. We're not here just because you're fine. <laughs> we are coming. Uh -huh. If something here, yeah, whoever coming you get is their responsibility. <laughs> but notice that Jesus separated the devils from Mary. Uh huh. The same one. Who she walked with. See, when you trade teams, you trade coverings, you get help. Yep. The one who wasn't doing the job, Mary said, You ain't doing what you're supposed to do. I got devils, but I know who can help me. Some of y'all need to change your cover. You need to change your watching over your life. Because somebody went on the side there, but, but I know a man who can cover you, who can watch over your soul. Who can protect you from demons and get rid of demons? This Bible says that for this reason was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. To cast out means to drive them out. Amen. It simply means this, y'all. It literally means to uh to to lead away with force. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You can't say it there. See, when you're dealing with demons, you can't be nothing. No. Are you talking to your grandma? Oh no! The demons say, "Oh, that wasn't talking to me." When you deal with demons, you gotta use the authority that's in Christ. Come out to Jesus. 
Jesus. Amen. All of the spirit is shaking up in you right now. They are uncomfortable because when they hear the name of Jesus, you must come out in the name of Jesus. Anything and anybody in here, any spiritual infirmity, tormenting spirit, y'all ain't with me. Whatever your name is, you must submit to the name of Jesus and come out and leave out of God's people. Y'all ain't with me. If you ain't never heard a pastor say that, find you some more cover. Because he ain't doing what he's supposed to do. Because you can't preach the folks and they hear the word and devils in them and you think they can do the word when they are oppressed and hindered and manipulated. Y'all ain't with me. Tell people preaching the folks and wondering why they're not responding to the preacher. Because there's something inside of them hindering them from doing the word. So you got to be in the ministry of casting out demons. How am I going to obey a word that a demon is giving me another call from the word that you're talking about? Time is out for the faith. If you don't have no power, you can't even preach. Because the confirmation of the gospel is through miracle signs and wonders and casting out of demons. Let me prove it to you. The book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 20 says, But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. So if you cast out no demons, where is the kingdom of God manifested? Oh, did we have a good time? But oppressed. Multi-millionaires, many times over as many wars as our country has fought. 
But we ain't got nothing from country to other countries. All the oil money. From when we went to Iraq. That's, that's biblical principle. Somebody got resources, but it didn't filter down to us. Y'all want to Y'all want to Amen. I declare war, but we win. We ain't gonna get our part. I think we own something, y'all. Amen. Contact your local congressman and senators. I will say something. We don't want to do that. Amen. The Bible said she went and told them that had been with him. That as they wanted what? Go to the war. They cried when they should be celebrating. Go to the war. They cried when they should be celebrating. Look, look here. Did he tell me he was going to get up in three days? Well, it's the third day now. Why are you at home crying when you should be praising? But they believe not. And y'all know what? We're in the flesh. <laughs> the Bible don't say that it's just me and my imagination. Y'all know my imagination. Maybe we got a demon again. Come on, Jesus don't got up. <laughs> no, you got a spirit of happiness because you forgot what he told you. Yeah. You mourn and depressed, you don't want to the spirit. And I come to deliver you with the good news of the resurrection. Now I'm acting like the evangelist, but y'all are supposed to be apostles. Ain't it something when God has to use women to deal with those who are supposed to be walking close with Jesus? We have a long preacher man. <laughs> and the Bible said, they believe. Can you see Mary like, how could you walk with him, eat with him? And the, the, the same demons that were cast out of me, y'all cast him out, but Mary don't believe. She looking like, what is up with this picture? Where is the apostolic power? See, God's gifts and callings are without repentance. See, the gift is Him manifesting. But your belief is up to you believing what He has seen. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Bible says after that, He appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. So, God, I want you to walk on the show. So, He appeared in the form so that they could not recognize. So the Bible says, my sheep know mine. And they, if you know his voice, no matter what form he comes in, you'll know his Jesus. Uh, see, people trip on the outward appearance, but can I hear the voice of Jesus through you? See, people get caught up on gender. They get caught up in, uh, if you have apostle in front of your name, or prophet, or evangelist, pastor, teacher. But I'm like this. I don't care what's in front of your name. Uh, who's in you and who's coming out your mouth? Uh, all I want to know is Jesus in there I can receive from you. Because there's some folks who put stuff in front of their name, but ain't no Jesus coming out their mouth. Uh -huh. Means two, they went and told it to the residue, neither believe they know. See, this is how the Lord deals with unbelief. The truth has to show of himself. So he shows up in their unbelief. Your unbelief don't stop God from being yeah. God. Right. It simply stops you and I from receiving what he desires for that. You, just because you don't believe God, ain't going to stop being God because you unbelieve. 
Uh, all it is is your unbelief. You forsake the you forsake God moving in your life to change your situation. So he shows up now. The same folk who didn't believe, they believe now because they had an encounter. Everyone needs an encounter with the Lord. How are you going to preach when you had no encounter? How are you going to say you're a prophet if you had no encounter? When I read my Bible, has that even the word came to me? When I read my Bible, those were prophets in the word came to such and such. Isaiah was calling got a vision of the throne of the Lord. He said, woe is me, for I am undone on me. I am in the midst of my eyes has seen the Lord. And the Lord had to get the seraphim to get a coal from fire in the temple and put it on his mouth and cleanse it so that he could now go forth and speak truth to the people. Y'all ain't with me. How you gonna serve the Lord and they had no encounter? See, when you see him, no one can convince you that he does not exist. And see, the problem is, there are people who forsake what they say they were called to do because they have not had a true encounter. When you really tasted and heard and felt Jesus for yourself, then you preach from a true platform as a witness and you preach from a testimony and you are so convinced that folks say, that was for real. That woman is for real. Why? Because they've seen it for themselves. So you can't talk about nobody that you ain't really seen. You don't understand being a false witness. You're trying to preach off hearsay. Oh, no, 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 no. The Bible says, after we appear unto the eleven, it said, you and praise them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believe not. Them which had seen him after he was risen. <laughs> Y'all remember the encounter when he came through the walls, appeared right in the midst of them, just right in the midst of Peter. Amen. He told Tom, once, unless I see him put my finger and hang over the head. Jesus said, Here you go. Put it in there. Amen. Feel it. Right. And he dropped to his knees. My Lord <laughs> and my God. Uh -huh. So it took me showing up for you to believe me, but he said, blessed is those who have not seen me yet believe. See, you are blessed today if you have not seen it, but yet your belief allows you to see it. See, you believe through hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you have faith, you see. I'm going to say it again. If you have faith, you see. You don't have to hope for something that you already see in your hand. Mm -hmm. From that point on, Thomas now could die for him. Thomas was speared over in the country of India. He was willing to die for the gospel. Y'all ain't with me. Uh -huh. How many of y'all willing to die for the gospel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't take out the code to expose some true belief. Uh huh. COVID came and put this on preaching. Some of them. Churches shut down. Some of them. God will allow things to see if you read it or not. To see if you're still going to pray or not. Uh huh. To see if you're going to preach or not. To still see if you're going to give or not. <coughs> COVID just a test run. Y'all waiting until the summer and fall. Y'all waiting until the fall. Uh huh. Then another test is coming. And it's going to see are you going to trust God or are you going to trust me? Y'all let me see. I told y'all before COVID came that it was coming because the Lord told me to warn y'all. I'm telling you, by the time we get to the fall, Lord, willing deep into the fall, you're going to have to believe God like you never believed Him before. You're going to have to trust Him like you never trusted Him before. Trust Him with your mind, your body, your soul, your finances, your children, your parents. You're going to have to trust Him. Well, when I'm coming to church this Sunday, I shall trust in the Lord. Until the day I, until the day I die. 
Uh huh. Trust now as long as it ain't going good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Bible says, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, Now I want you to leave these four walls and go tell them. Good news. I don't watch a lot of news, y'all. I don't. Hey, look, if you watch the news, you're listening to false news. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. It's simply for you to learn to deal with a thought concept that they want you to have right. so that you line your heart up with fear tactics. Yes. Right. And the Bible says, Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, love power, and a sound mind. They, they form your thought process so that you make decisions in fear and not in faith. Well, I'm trying to tell y'all the truth. I want y'all to know this time that they want you to make decisions out of fear and not, you know, when you're scared, you just do something yeah. to try to get a temporary relief. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then you find out you've been lied to. Right. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a lot of stuff we feel out that we've been lied to. Yeah. Uh-huh. You're lying that the preacher was telling you the truth. Uh huh. If, if the preacher is telling you what God said, he's telling you the truth. The Bible says, let God be true and every other man alive. Uh huh. The Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Believe, have faith upon, and is baptized shall be saved. When you're saved, you need to be baptized. The Spirit of the Lord baptizes us into the body of Christ. Romans chapter 8, the water of baptism will be sent by him. Uh, to people to let them know that I have given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, this is a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And when he was risen, I was raised with him. We were buried with him in baptism. And was raised with him through the resurrection. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. 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 And but he that believeth not shall be back. If you don't believe, you are condemning your own self. And I'm going to say it again. If you don't believe, you are condemning your own self. God ain't condemning you. You are already condemned by your choice of rejecting Jesus as Lord and Savior. How do you say you love the Father but you hate Jesus? He said, the Bible said, he that has the Son has the Father. I don't care who you are, what you say you believe, if Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, he has a monopoly on salvation. You may hear it somewhere else that there's another way, ain't no other way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. Preachers, remember that. Preach that. Live that. Jesus is the only way. Now, if you say that, you get persecuted. So now, feel good messages get preached. But the focus is not Jesus Christ. His sinless life, his sacrificial death on the cross, his resurrection on the third day, his ascension and his coming back soon. That's gospel. See, it's so strange now that y'all don't need clapping. It's so strange now that it seems strange to you. It's foreign to you. Uh, at least you should say amen, preaching the preaching truth. You can be in the Bible now, you can be scriptural now, but because people have heard so many lies, they don't even respond to the truth. No oh, have mercy, what has happened in our world? Look, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Look at that. These mementos or signs or tokens follow those who believe in Jesus. So you're going to tell me you believe in Jesus, but what's following you? I'm going to say it again. It's right there in the book. These signs shall follow those that believe. If there is no signs, then I have to doubt whether you really believe. I'm in the book. I'm going to say it again. I ain't trying to hoop you right now. I'm trying to give you the truth. These signs shall follow those who believe. And if I don't see no signs, then 
I can't call on you. Signs point to someone. Uh, don't have your app on your phone to give you directions, but if you can read signs, you can get to your destination. There are folks who can't get to Jesus because there ain't no signs to call to you to point me to Jesus. These signs should point you to the preacher for him to be your God. The signs point to Jesus. Okay. There's too much preacher worship. I'm going to say it again. There's too much preacher worship. We as men of God have to tell you, don't worship me, you worship the Lord. And the Lord only. I'm simply the messenger, the ambassador to give you the truth of the gospel, but only God deserves your worship. Now respect the position, but the worship goes to God. Now, there are signs. Now, now here is one of them. In my name, they should cast out devils. In, in my authority, in my character, they cast out devils. Meaning that when the devils hear my name, and when they see my character, they got to go. But how you going to tell the devil to leave? When his name is not in you. If his character is not in you. If you don't have some Galatians chapter 5, round verse 21, 22. And the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long suffering and meekness and temperance and faith. The devil know if you fake or if you're real. Because if you fake, they'll tell you I ain't going nowhere. They'll growl at you. I growl back up, growl, come on. Y'all ain't with me. You coming out, and then when they start cussing, y'all don't want to talk to them. Devil curse you. I said, I bind the tongue till we can't use the tongue. Come out, y'all don't want to talk to me. They know whether you fake or not, but when you're real, they try to contort it. You can do all the gymnastics you want. You can it out. You can do all the yoga you want, but you come out today. <laughs> and she will not have to go to the, neuro the uh, neurologist appointment on Tuesday. The only thing wrong is you you got her spine and her nervous system messing with it. And when you come out, she's going to be good. Y'all want to talk to me? I'm talking about sign. There's a man of God, a woman of God, you listen to that you walk. Do they have signs? Or are you just driving aimlessly, don't know where you're going? Don't know who you worship. Don't know who you praise. You just show up because the preacher sounds good. Preaching with no sign. Signs. Teaching with no signs. Y'all won't talk to me. Uh-huh. Not only that, they're going to speak with new tongue. Y'all say, you know what? You better be glad I don't cut no more. New talk. New language. Amen. Not only that, you should have some utterance of the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues with interpretation. Y'all with me? Uh -huh. Those are signs. Ooh, and y'all been challenged in the past week and said, you know what? You put a couple last year. Next up, the Bible says, shout out, Lord, how are you? I got on my interpretation. The Lord bless you. Mm -hmm. And the Lord save you. It delivered you from the demon that's messing with your mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talk to you. How do I fuck me? <laughs> you don't want to do that, you got to buy them lunch. Do good to those who hate you. Be not overcome with evil, but be that what do good to overcome. You will pour coals of fire on the head. Then you do it. You say, you, you get in your car. I know what I'm saying. 
I bought them lunch. I'm saying, they supposed to be cussed out. And slap. Or clip. Or shot. Jesus is for real. Oh, are y'all with me? That's, those are signs that now your language has changed. Your acts has changed. Because when your speech changed, your behavior changed. All right. They're going to take up serpents. They should drink anything deadly and they shall not hurt them. They should have hands on the sick and they shall recover. Take up serpents now. Don't you go out here and pull the snake around the area. Are y'all hearing me? Don't you go out there. Mess with no diamond back, no cotton mouth, or nothing. Respect them out. Now don't let somebody out there. Y'all got me because I got a rate, and if the rate don't work, I got a gun and have no real estate. Hang out more. I know I'm supposed to be as wise as a serpent as long as a dove, but if he comes this way, amen. 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 I'm going to part. I'm going to depart you from that body. Now, y'all hear me that saying that taking up serpents literally means that you will take authority over the enemy. Yes. That's what it means. There's some folks who take that literally. Now they have church where they hold it up stage. <laughs> There's some of them get bit and they die. And they're like, well, no, you misinterpreted what the word is saying. There's some stuff you take literally, and that's some, some stuff that is some body. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Don't y'all learn what snakes up here. <laughs> my pastor, he said we can take up snakes. I'm going to test out that spirit of the It's not just physical liquids of alcohol. But anytime you drink what somebody is pouring out of their mouth that is not a God, I'm gonna say that in here. Because we call them folks alcoholics when you could be a spiritual alcoholic. You drunk a false information. And then you become someone that you should be praying that they get the lift. The very fact that, that no signs fall on you that you can pray for them, and then guess what? That spirit come off of them lets me know that you really don't love them like a brother and a sister. It lets me know that you just as drunk as they are. Uh -huh. They may be a physical alcoholic, but you're a spiritual alcoholic. Because you want somebody to tell you how to make you feel good, but you don't want change. You want somebody to tell you that you're all right, but you're not all right. I'm going to pull me another shot. Let me know I'm all right being just as I am. The devil is a lot. If God said you're supposed to be this way, this way you're supposed to be. Nah, let me go to the bartender. Let them pull me, pull me another one. Tell me I can do whatever. No, you can't. The soul that sins shall surely die. Bye. I'm pouring out a stiff dollar shot of every scripture that you need. But you never heard it that way, did you? <laughs> Some of y'all who bring a shrub and say, get them for you. I ain't gonna get all of us. 
Because all of us have sinned and fallen short of what? The glory of God. And that's why we lean on Jesus. The Bible said they shall lay hands on the sick, the weak, the feeble, the infirm, and they shall what? Recover. They shall be restored back to hell. Are there any signs that show that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? If it ain't, don't follow me. If there is no signs in my life, don't follow me. I'm going to say it again. Because most preachers won't tell you this. If you don't see no signs, don't follow me. I'm going to say it again. Because you're following people with no signs and wonder why you lost. There are folks lost following folks who don't have no signs pointing to Jesus. Churches are full of folks following people with no direction. How can you point me to a Savior that you don't know? How can you point me to a Savior that you ain't submitted to? My God, but he tapped me. Oh yeah, the Bible said uh, he scourges every son who he received. I was asking God, what's up with that? He said, my child. And you don't whoop on four children. <laughs> children. <laughs> do, you, do you whoop somebody else's child? I got you. Oh, Lord, you're going to catch a fight if you whoop somebody else's child without their permission. Oh, the back room coming up. Whatever house they sent you to, they had a thought in a whoop. Hey, Amen. Then you get another whoop when you get back home. Hey, Amen. You get a double whoop. Like, oh, Declare that should follow those who believe. 
If you've seen the signs and you've heard the good news of the gospel, it requires a response from you and I. It's response time to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you hear and you know that you have not given your life to Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, I ask that you come as your man by the Spirit of the Lord. One day to give your life to Christ. This is not something that you figure out in your head. This is something that you respond to from what you've heard about Christ. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtain a good report, a good witness. If what you heard in the Spirit of God is moving your heart to come and submit your life to Christ so that you can give you a new life to Him, I ask that you come. If you hear that the Spirit of the Lord is leading you to join this level fellowship of believers, you come with a relationship in Christ. I ask that you come.